All right. So it is time for our feature interview this week with Tazos and Jamie from The Bleeding. We had a great time discussing their latest album and our favorite tracks, their favorite moments, uh, where this band has been, where they're headed. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for such a great conversation. Okay, here it is. We have been absolutely blown away by the new album. I mean, I wasn't familiar with you guys before, but um, I, I, uh, your guitar playing is uh, on this record is just incredible. So, yeah, so appreciate we, it. Thank you. We ine- we immediately thought we needed to reach out because this we think this is going to be this album is going to be in a lot of top ten lists at the end of the year. We think. So. Yeah, I've read a lot of glowing reviews. So I totally agreed with one that said, you know, you read your name and you're thinking Cannibal Corpse, you know, but what comes back at me, it's like, you're closer to like Necropanther as far as the melodicness. And, um, do you hear that a lot or? Yeah. I mean, um, this album has some Cannibal Corpse elements and our name has been inspired by Cannibal corpse uh but from the uh our roots are in thrash metal uh but we all adore 90s death metal yeah so it's a blend of the two we just uh our music we always want to make sure that it contains that punk rock element of thrash we yeah. don't want it to get purely death metal yeah. um this is my opinion and i feel that uh, you know, you, your benchmark, if you're playing uh, in a band, in a metal band, should be Motorhead. How close are you to Motorhead? Yeah. Uh, if you're Dream Theater, if you compare Dream Theater and, and Slayer, uh, if you compare them to Motorhead, how close are they? Right. Now, I, I would go with Slayer. Right. Uh, so in, in, in the case of our music, uh, we 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 got that thrash element because we feel it's it's cool. It adds to that sort of like uh, punk rock energy. Yeah the 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 riffs are so crunchy and the guitar playing is so melodic. It reminded me a little bit of deceased and uh, ghoul without the pillowcases on their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Just very steeped in old school but a new sound you know so yeah very very good yeah the riffs are so thick and so violent i was like have they ever like hurt themselves playing it's so crazy (laughs) (laughs) any injuries from playing well um i think so (laughs) yeah jump around and and go crazy and tells us is a a yeah you're right i don't know how he does it yeah, there's a there's a Joe Rogan where he's interviewing James Hetfield and he's talking about how he and Mustaine and the guys from Anthrax, they all had to get surgery from headbanging as they got older, you know. And then Joe Rogan takes a totally dumb turn is like, well, you should try this machine. I just had it installed. And then he talks about some machine for 20 minutes, kills the whole vibe of the interview. I was like, oh, my God, you know. No. that makes the machine but that, that reminds me of a funny story Francis and I were at a gig of a friend of ours and uh, we were like everyone was just sitting there watching the gig very passively and we were like I, I cut them on the show and I was like let's go and head bang he's like yeah let's do it so we charged to the front and start just going crazy within seconds of a proper mosh pit had started and then we sort of retreated to the back and watched <laughs> And the next day, I phoned him up. I was like, "Man, I can't move my neck." <laughs> you know, there was no warm up. It was just reaching that age where you're like, "Yeah, really need to warm up for these things now." Oh yeah, yeah. That's like uh, uh, my my ex's family used to play American football on Thanksgiving morning, and I was always in good shape. I was a good runner, but the juking and that I don't do every day. So the next day I would go to work and I would be like, here's a dollar. Can you get something off the fax machine for me? I can't stand up. <laughs> and they'd all would rag on me and call me old man, you know? Yeah. Well, let me tell you the worst, the worst of injuries are the ones when that happen when you have to carry guitar amplifiers yeah. and speaker cabinets and 
all sorts of gear. We, both myself and Jamie have suffered back oh, yeah. injuries and neck injuries and everything. And we've been seeing <laughs> physiotherapists for a long time. Oh, make, yeah. and, and, you know, you need to be careful. You know, if you, you know, if you're not careful, um, you know, you can hurt yourself, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, we love it. So we don't mind. Yeah, in Europe, they, I know they, they love those narrow staircases in Europe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a roll, and when there's a sheet of ice over them, it's even more fun, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Jamie, careful with uh, if you're on the, on the phone. I think you might be blocking the mic on the phone. All right. Okay. Let me. I think it's actually the little tag that goes around the uh, the charger. I'm trying to charge it at the same time. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we've uh, uh, we've both done our time of lugging heavy heavy shit up and down flights of stairs i mean i i definitely have. I don't know about you, Charles, but... <laughs> that's living the dream yeah yeah you you i'm sure you've heard this but metal archives has no less than seven bands listed at the ble as the bleeding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. however none of the rest of them have anything good out that we could find yeah they, they're all they all seem like they all yeah. gave up after a few years you know so what, what do you think has inspired that as the name so much I think it's just that one cannibal corpse album well um you know the the band was started by me and uh Themis K from acid death uh and we were thinking about names and we both made lists of names and i added the bleeding and i think i was thinking about that album by Cannibal Corpse, yeah. and and I didn't realize that there were more bands that had that name. I, I did a little bit of a Google search. I didn't even go to Metal Archives, and nothing came up. Uh, so we thought it's a badass name, and we went, let's go with that one. Um, there are other bands with that same name, but like you said, they haven't done much. No. Right. Um, and I think with this album. Um, the last album, the new album, uh, we want to really claim that name. It's, you know, the bleeding means massacre. It doesn't mean anything emo. It doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean leeches. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything funny. It means business. And yeah. that's what this album is about, to, to, to make sure that we make a statement that this is us and uh, we mean it. Yeah, you, you have evolved through a couple different phases, but you've always kept that consistent old school sound. What do you credit responsible for staying as hard and tough as ever? Well, Jamie? Your <laughs> sensibilities, so Tassus's old school sensibilities. I could possibly lean in a more unconventional direction. And I think in songs that I've had influence over, because Tassus is the main songwriter, but in the past I've written a song here or there or influence, and I would tend to push it in a more uh, typical thrash direction, let's say, or I have a lot of other musical uh, interests, so I might lean in a much more avant-garde or progressive direction. And Tassus is the one who has the sensibilities. He knows what the bleeding is supposed to be and what it should sound like. And I think in the past I've doubted him, and uh, this time around I really didn't. And uh, I'm finding the less I doubt him, the truer the sound of the bleeding comes through. So, uh, abilities, I would say. So you has produced this album, didn't he? Did he do? Is that always been the way, or is that a new thing? Um, Go ahead. Not, it's always been the way. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm not much on a. Uh, I mean, Tessas is, is an extremely sorry to speak about you in the third person here, Tessas. <laughs> uh, you are an extremely talented uh, producer. Uh, you know, he, he the demos that uh, he was producing. I remember when we were well, quite some time ago. I was consistently impressed with the production techniques. And the demos sound really good, uh, but uh, you know, when you've got somebody like that in the band it's uh you have the work really because rather than uh, leaving it all to the engineer you've got somebody who can actually say 
sort of steer the ship, so to speak, and just say yeah. to the engineer, actually, I think you need to lose a couple of dB at X frequency. Right. Or, and, you know, if you've got somebody like that, for one thing, the engineers really appreciate that because they love it when somebody understands the craft of what they're doing. And I think what we had on this album was that perfect fusion of somebody incredibly talented doing the, uh, the production. I mean, Ronnie Bjornstrom has done a, an incredible job, an incredible job. I, I couldn't be happier. And uh, I know Tassos has had a lot of input in that process. So it's kind of two, I assume two guys, because I wasn't a party to a lot of the process, but uh, two guys who are really passionate about what they do. And, uh, you know, we got more than the sum of the parts. That's great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I really, like Mark was saying to me, you know, sometimes I feel like I got to play it again just to hear that guitar riff or that hook again. So kudos to you guys. Yeah. It's really, really good. Well, what is what is a monocrater anyway? Yeah, what is a monocrater? If you Google it, it just comes up with your album, which is a good thing. <laughs> exactly. That's So, you know, we, like I said, we wanted to make a statement with this album. And I was thinking we need to 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 promote something that, is unique um, and identifiable. And this is a, a, a an old Greek word. It means uh, single ruler uh, or ultimate ruler um, uh, or emperor of emperors. Uh, so it's kind of like that guy on the front cover. Uh, so this is like the, the ultimate emperor and um, uh, it is something that projects that sort of like power that we wanted to project with this album. Yeah, who did the artwork? It's really, it's really an incredible painting. I mean, Juanjo Castellano. Uh, uh, we were very lucky. Oh, you know, we wanted to find someone established to work on the artwork, and we were lucky to get him at a stage where he had some time off and he could work on, on our um, cover. Uh, and he did an amazing job. He's, he's really pleased with that as well. He feels that it's one of his best works, illustrations yeah. ever. And it even gets more detailed in the gatefold, is it? Um, there's no more detail on the gatefold. However, we have done some uh, extra stuff that are unique uh, on the back cover. I love the drooling hordes. That's one of my favorites with that. <laughs> and that, there's like specters. It's so much going on. It's just definitely wow. <laughs> yeah, again, it was a collaboration. It wasn't, you know, just him on his own. Um, you know, we really pushed what we wanted to see on there uh, and even going as granular as pushing uh, for certain colors and the contrast and what we wanted like we wanted something that has a strong impact well I, at least on metal archives they only list lyrics to one song i think it's the chainsaw uh-huh yeah yeah how come you guys only listed lyrics to one song? It's not us. We didn't. It's it's fans who go in there and and, and do that. I, I think um, I don't know if anyone's got a, a physical copy of the album just yet because okay. it got released last Friday. So um, I don't know if the copies have reached anyone yet to be okay. able to to see the lyrics okay. uh but that song uh had a lyric video to support it okay and I, I and i think the guy who put the lyrics on metal archives got them from the lyric video that makes sense okay yeah that was really neat it kind of made that cover come to life yeah so do you think you'll really do well some done. more videos for the other songs or we 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 wanted to but the, you know it's it, <laughs> It's tough with videos. You need a lot of coordination, and we couldn't make it happen. But uh, we we want to do actual music videos, so I'm hoping that uh, maybe a bit later. It would be neat. Even if you ever see where some like they'll do a playthrough, like they'll just play the guitar part over the song and and put that up. But sometimes yeah. those are really neat too, because you get to see how much goes into all that. Right. Sure. Just just a thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. While we're talking about metal archives, they list Jordan as UK, 
James from Malaysia, uh, Jamie from Ireland, and Tessa's from Greece. Is that all right? Is, it, is that where you're all living now? Or is it is that just where you were born, I guess, or, or something? Nobody thought I was from Ireland because for a while I actually played guitar in a band called Era Vulgaris. Uh, not to be confused with... Uh, who was it that did an album called Era Vulgaris? Uh, it, this, uh, this band actually predated the album uh so uh yeah but they thought i was from ireland because the rest of the band were from ireland, not from ireland, not from ireland. Oh, okay okay well, so but you're all yeah, we we, now, we all live it we all live in london no no okay gotcha um i'm originally greek okay uh but we all live in london and we've been here for like a long time i love it so you had a connection. In fact, we just interviewed um, James McBain for Hell Ripper. And ah. I saw that you guys, he was on your last record doing some vocals. How did you guys get hooked up with him? Well, uh, uh, James is an old friend. And um, uh, we we are quite um, grateful to know him. He's an amazing guy. Not only is he a really talented musician, uh, but uh, he's also a great person. And um, we, I believe, we're the, the, the guys who brought him to London to play to London for the first time. We put together a show and we invited Hell Ripper over. Um, and uh, I think if I, if I understand this correctly, um, at that show, um, uh, at an agent from no, and an A and R person from a, a record label uh, was attending and uh, hooked Hell Ripper up with um, oh damn, what's the uh, speed metal band, the big one? Um, drawing a blank. Anyway, uh, and and he got on a tour with these guys. Um, so um, when I asked. Uh, I, th I thought we had that song, uh, Rising to Nothing, that had that speed metal, kind of like D-beat thing going on. And I thought it'd be really cool if we could do like a duet with um, uh, James. Uh, the problem is, uh, I would realize after the fact that uh, uh, James and uh, Jamie, they sound quite uh, similar. Uh, so it's hard to, to make out who's singing oh. which verse. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah i think my favorite one is though from this album is the screams of torment that was that guitar solo like a spontaneous or was it a planned it just in the middle there it's just wow right you you have the two people who constructed this solo so it wasn't just me uh jamie's also an incredible guitarist and for that particular song, that was the trickiest one to get right. And um, uh, I, Jamie wanted to do something to, to write the solo. So I don't know, do uh, you want to talk about it? Yeah, so I think, I can't remember how many iterations of that solo we went through. I think it was probably seven or eight, maybe nine. And uh, originally, I, I mean, like I, I just spitballed a whole bunch of different ideas and uh Tassus was very keen to uh make sure that it uh the solo and the rhythm stabs could be interspersed with one another because uh, to play that song live you can't uh you can't just solo over the whole thing it has to be uh you have to be able to flip almost like rhythm and solo because Tassus is the guitar player of the bleeding we don't have two guitarists um, so what we ended up doing was um, we we sort of amalgamated, didn't we? Like the first half of the solo was you, and the second half of the solo, when it starts to do the uh, uh, ascending and then descending part, was me. And then you fix the ending, mm -hmm. and that's what I really appreciate about you, Tessus, is that you've got such a great metal sensibility. I play all kinds of music. I play jazz. I play metal. I play everything, um, and in that song, what it needed was somebody who had a great understanding of how to finesse. And that's yeah. what Tassas does. He knows just how to take what I've done and just give it that last little 
sort of like 20 percent to make it perfect and uh you know i've actually learned a lot as a guitar player as a metal guitar player just from watching how tassas does what he does because he's a, he's a he's the metal master as far as i'm concerned yeah okay. yeah the, there's I, I couldn't remember i can't remember the last death metal album that i listened to where i was playing a song over and over again because of the guitar solo you know a lot of times the guitar solos in death metal they just kind of look to up the energy level a little bit but this one is so lyrical it's like it's it's like uh you know when i used to make people listen to richie blackmore solos or uh, eddie van halen solos but no no listen to this listen to it right here the way it ends on the one it's so perfect you know that sort of thing just total geek out stuff you know yeah or thin lizzy you know that, that sort of thing oh yeah. well, sure absolutely well, we, we both love uh, classic rock as much as anyone else. I mean, uh, the roots of uh, so much metal are in that bluesy, uh, that yeah. bluesy going, uh, Deep Purple, as you say, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. the great. Yeah, you can hear I've got that. a po poster of Richie Blackmore looking at me right oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But we we both spent uh, most of the a better part of the nineties um, working and developing neoclassical guitar lead guitar uh, skills and techniques and understanding that sort of thing, especially myself like learning uh, to play Malmsteen and Vinnie Moore, Tony McAlpine, mm. all of these guys, uh, the, the the shrapnel. Yeah. shredders from back in the day um and you know getting that to work in the death metal um, uh, field is it, it takes a little while i think um the first attempts if you listen to our first ep you could hear that it was a little bit too melodic it wasn't quite right um it, it, finding the right balance is uh, is where the magic is i think yeah. yeah, there's a Deicide album where he gets a, a guitar player that's playing like Malmsteen. I don't know if you if you know the one I'm talking about, but it didn't fit. And I just remember being like, it sounds great until the solo. And then you're like, what? It, it, you know, it's like oil and water. You know, there's got to yeah. be that 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 blend, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the incredibly hot sauce that you don't want too much of. You know, you just need a touch. <laughs> just a little bit of it, right? <laughs> Only he can do it the way he does it. I mean, uh, people like to rip on on Ingve, but uh, to me, he's one of the original guitar heroes. You know, nobody plays guitar like he does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I love the lyrics to to Chainsaw Death Cut. Who's the horror buff, or is it a bunch of you? And and what would be your favorite horror movies or books? <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, well, I guess uh, we 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 all love horror, um, and uh, I wrote the lyrics on that one. So, I guess um, I had I have very specific visual fantasies when I write lyrics, and it has to have a, a narrative and it has to be like a little film in my head uh, for it to fit. And in that one, I had this very clear vision of. Uh, uh, I guess like a sort of a culty religious gathering and uh, somebody who was looking to uh, just slice and dice. Um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a splatter gore horror fan. I like, uh, I, I mean, I love The Witch and Hereditary and uh, th that kind of thing. But I also love classics like uh, The Exorcist and uh, Hellraiser and, uh, yeah. you know, the whole gamut of, of horror. I love it all. So uh, I'm not sure where all of the juices for that one came from, but uh, you know, there is part of all of us that would love to just fire up a chainsaw and just let rip. I mean, I'm assuming, yeah. you know, maybe it's just me. Uh, <laughs> I like how the very last lyric though is in my imagination, <laughs> like disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, uh, I, remember, I remember playing a song. To, I was going on a date at the time uh, and uh, that we were writing this stuff, I think, or just before. And uh, the, the the girl I was going on the date with said, oh, wow, so you're playing a metal band. Can you send me some stuff? I sent it across. And she's like, yeah, I can't really understand what you're saying. Can you send me the lyrics? 
So I sent her the lyrics to one of these songs. I can't remember which one. And she came back like saying, I don't think it's going to work. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. The um, the, ske- the skeleton with the entrails wielding, does he have a name? With yeah, is he a mascot or a burgeoning mascot? or Possibly an Eddie. Yeah. Maybe make an appearance on stage. I, I, I love it as an idea. Yeah. Why not? We uh, uh, we're talking with Matt Harvey from Exhumed, and then we went. They came to Baltimore, so we went to go see him. And they actually got have this guy who runs around stage with a chainsaw, and they said they Doctor Filthy, Doctor Filthy. That's and amazing. sometimes they have ta- difficult time trying to get through customs. Like, no, no, he's part of the band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's great. Um, having any sort of like gimmick like that can add a lot to to a live act. Yeah. It's a bit tricky though. Because it can get a bit silly and unconvincing, but if if done right, it can add a lot to to a show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. As long as you're extremely careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're one of three UK bands on the um redefining, redefining darkness. darkness. So how did you end up signing with them, and has your experience been a positive one? <laughs> Yeah, I can I can talk about that. Um, I've uh, I've known uh, Tommy uh, f- uh, for a while now, um, and we used to be uh, with a different la- uh, Can- Canadian label called uh, Will Now Records, uh, and we're quite ha- happy with these guys. Um, uh, really cool. Uh, however, there was some issue uh, with the owner of the label, his personal problem. Uh, so we couldn't, unfortunately, continue with them. And and r- right around that time, we released that Rising to Nothing EP uh, with oh, yeah. the one you mentioned with Hell Ripper, uh, James on the vocals, uh, get, get, as a, on guest vocals. And uh, Tommy listened, heard that demo. Uh, no, it wasn't the demo. It was the actual release. And um, uh, he went, like, yeah, let's do something together. And um, I thought, yeah, that's great because um, I, I really like uh, Thomas, and I think he gets it. He gets what it, you know, what it takes for a band to create something. He he treats it with respect, and also he's um, he's the kind of person who understands the scene, understands what it takes for someone to to to. Uh, in order to create something good and what sort of support they need. Uh, So we're really happy. Um, I mean, um, we've worked with people who have taught us lessons and Tom is not one of them. He's, he's a really cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's over the years, there's just certain labels that you associate with quality where you say, you know, like, well, it's on 20 bucks spin, so it's probably going to be good. Or it's on Redefining Darkness, so it's probably going to be good. Kind of like yeah. the old days, it's on Metal Blade, it's worth checking out. You know what I mean? So it's just sort of a, it's a credibility thing, you know. So. Exactly. And he won't just put out anything. Right. Uh, he, he he would have to to like it. Uh, and that's important. You, you want someone who, who is behind you who gets it and supports the music as well. So it's yeah. a win-win situation. Sometimes people will ask us, this band you're interviewing, are they any good? And we'll say, we only interview bands that we, we like. like. We get so many promos and emails, and we have to just funnel through it and pick the cream of the crop. That's what we do. Like the bleeding. Sing. We let our listeners know. We've done the work for you. You just go enjoy. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Should we play our game? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So I have, uh, well, for you guys, since you're two, we'll do each three random questions. I have a hundred questions before me, so each pick three numbers. Uh, okay, twenty-two, thirty-three, forty-four. Thirty-three and forty-four. All right. Uh, let's start with you, number twenty-two. Have you ever pulled a prank on someone? Uh, in a band context, I guess we're talking here, or uh, in, gen- <laughs> in general. Anything interesting? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, <laughs> one that particularly sticks out in my mind. 
Uh, I guess the best stories are the ones that where something gets a little bit out of hand. Uh, uh, well, I definitely used to uh, blow a lot of stuff up as a child. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I can think of numerous occasions where people nearly lost fingers because I was just messing around. And uh, <laughs> yeah, including me, I'm actually continually amazed that I have all the fingers on my hand. So, so yeah, the, I mean, the stuff that we used to get up to, uh, yeah, pranking. Yeah, it's a bit more intentional than that, though. So, you know, I don't think I'm actually a prankster. I tend to be, uh, yeah, I tend to be the, I, I, like, I'm a, sort of person that does stuff on my own so if i was going to blow stuff up i wouldn't uh you know i wouldn't necessarily bl try and blow somebody's fingers off i'd just uh, probably be more likely to injure myself so it's not in my character to be a prankster no i don't think yeah all right um 33 what is the first record or cd that you bought yourself oh okay that's a tough one so um I can remember the first CD I ever owned and it was uh, Divine Intervention by, by Slayer. Uh, and I loved it. Uh, had that, that controversial slashing of the arm with the Slayer logo. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, it really freaked everyone out. So I, I, I loved it. <laughs> but I think the first one I actually bought was Ride the Lightning, as I recall. So there we go. That's a great start. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a good one. At least yeah. it wasn't wake me up before you go go. <laughs> may or may not have been someone else's. Um, what <laughs> number forty four? What chore do you absolutely abhor doing? Mm. Okay, let me have a think about that. <sighs> Ironing. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Yeah, you know, whenever I see no iron sheets, I'm like, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan either. Not at all. So, I mean, like, I just stand there and I'm like, why am I doing this? Why, why, why? <laughs> One of the things you just put the stuff in and it, uh, it comes out. Yeah. Sometimes you can just throw it in the dryer and hope for the best. Yeah. All right, sir, you're up for your three numbers. Uh, uh, One to 100. Yeah. Um, seven, thirteen, um, sixty-nine. All right. So number seven. What is your biggest pet peeve? Um. Well. Maybe Jamie should answer that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, insincere people. Oh. Ah. <laughs> See, that's inside. Yeah, of yeah me. that's that's pretty pretty good. Yeah. Um, people who are not uh, what they appear to be. You know, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, I mean, th there's a lot of lack of intent, I think, in uh, in music, sort of like uh, when you watch a show and you, or you listen to a record and you're like, do they really mean it? You know, otherwise, what's the point? Why are they doing it? Why are they wasting right. their time? They're wasting their time. You know, so uh, and I think that's evident from the music, as you guys would agree, I'm sure, like uh, oh. uh, he's not yeah. screwing up. He really means it. And I do as well. So uh you know that we like to be around people who who also do. So I think people who don't would would drive us both mad. No, oh, yeah. yeah. The problem the problem with us is that we find a lot of stuff annoying, and uh, <laughs> uh, we're not the most um, sociable people either. So we kind of like like what we like, and everything else we we keep away from. Um, but yeah, I think I think you know, getting annoyed by certain uh, behaviors is one thing. Yeah. All right, I like it. All right, next question: If your house was on fire, what item or items would you grab before leaving? Oh man, um, I've got this amazing uh, uh, Jackson soloist guitar. 
1990 model uh, made in Japan that is, no, no, made in USA, sorry, that is really amazing. I'd grab that one and, and uh, take off. <laughs> Somehow I knew it was going to be a guitar yeah, somehow. Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. And then we had 69. Um, if you could learn a skill you do not currently possess, what would it be? <sighs> Rollerblading. <laughs> Rollerblading. That's hard. <laughs> I, need, about I need more speed. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. Do you guys have like the the rental scooters over there like they do like it's all the rage over here in the city it's like they're just winging by in business suits on a scooter i'm like okay yeah yeah we got it i think you had it first Maybe. it seems very european to me i would imagine well, look if people want to die in traffic that's their business <laughs> the other day i'm sitting on a light the other day in baltimore city and i see a scooter and it's got dad and daughter one is holding on behind and little daughter is in front. Three people on a scooter flying through traffic. I just was like, no helmets. I was like, wow. Darwin's wow. going to take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a commute. Yeah. So are you guys planning a tour? Is it in the works or festivals or what's going on with that? So I was already speaking to some guys and... I don't want to announce anything, but there are some festivals that uh, we've been approached to play on. Um, I'm afraid I can't announce anything yet. No. Uh, and uh, we haven't even discussed everything uh, in the band just yet in terms of dates and what works for us. We have a little festival over here called Maryland Death Festival, so keep that in mind. No. Uh, you guys should give us a shout if you know any promoters over there. You know, get them to to drop us a message. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because and be now great. we got two because this year was the inaugural hell in the hell at the harbor, and that was great too. Yes, next year they're gonna have two. They're gonna have MDF and they're gonna have this other one, hell in the harbor, and it's gonna be like an experiment to see can Baltimore support two huge extreme metal festivals in the same summer. So we'll see. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I think we can. We showed up. We well, the thing is, our our our, um, uh, our fan base is essentially uh, primarily in the United States, and uh, what sucks is we've never played there. Yeah. Um. So it's a bit of a of an anomaly that needs to be sorted soon. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. We um there's probably going to be room for you on some of these festivals because I've been hearing a lot of the bigger American bands are canceling these European dates. Like I heard Anthrax canceled. They were going to be on this big, a series of dates. And it, it just seems to me like with the cost of air, air travel, and, and they probably want to go first class, somebody on the back of a napkin said, we're going to lose money on this, you know? So if you could put together like a fantasy tour, like bands existing or in the past, just like a, fantasy lineup who would you put with you guys um i could start um probably from current bands um exhumed would be okay. one um uh, we would love to to play uh with bands like um well a lot of people used to compare us to to Testament, yeah. and we really love these guys. So um, that'd be a dream to play with Testament and someone like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of black metal, but we love Hell Ripper, and we'd love to to play with them again. Midnight would be another band. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and from the past, I, I mean, J Jamie is a total thrasher, so uh -huh. he's gonna, like he's got his roots deeply in in traditional thrash. And the reason we sound so thrashy is because of him. Uh, he turns every song into a, a, a thrash, mayhem, crazy thing, uh, and which is great. 
gives us this sort of character. Yeah, I mean, if I thank you, Tessus, much appreciated. And you know, if I had to pick some bands, I, you know, I really love Bloodbath, so uh, that that would be a cool band to tour with. Uh, I guess if, if on the more melodic side of things, I really love uh, uh, his name escapes me right now. Uh, I love Michael Amott's guitar playing. So, like uh, Carcass original lineup would would have been. A, oh my god! A, awesome. Carcass, you know, can't beat that. Or anything with Jeff Loomis, you know. Okay. Yeah. Have you guys like thought about what a set list on tour might include, or still kind of in the works? That that's that's, that's a tough one. I don't know, yeah. Jamie. Yeah, I think there's some some songs just work live, and uh, and some don't. And obviously, the new album, we have to experiment a little bit. I think we have played. Uh, some of these songs live once um but you know we haven't had enough time playing them to know what's really gonna hit the audience hard so uh so time's gonna tell on that one but it's a good question well we look forward to uh maybe seeing you guys someday and hit nudge nudge if you come yeah if you come this way anywhere east coast we'll we'll, we'll try to make the pilgrimage yeah. Baltimore's kind of right smack in the middle of the east coast so between dc and philly so yeah cool well, we appreciate we, yeah. yeah really interesting questions I, I really enjoyed the interview oh good well thank you we uh yeah well thank you guys for the music you're in my i i that you used to always jog to necropanther but i've it's kind of like a necropanther bleeding mix now so <laughs> Very good jogging music. Thank you. I see somewhere in Baltimore City, a woman is running to your music. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm at least a minute and a half faster now. <laughs> this is the Snaggletooth Extreme Metal Podcast. <laughs>